doing today? Happy summer! I hope you're wearing your jacket in Seattle. We're sun <laughs> These are summer. We just want to appreciate uh, the mentors of uh, Brother Alex, Louis, all the way from Texas, our brother and sister. Thank you for joining us. You know, you're traveling and said, we want to go to church. So thank you, thank you for coming today and all of you who are here. How many of you are excited for our drive through grocery giveaway? Everybody, we have a saying here, we live to give. We love to give. give. Amen. That is not just a cliche. We, that's our DNA. We live to give and we love to give. So we are a lot of blessings, especially during this inflation. Groceries prices are high. Gro gas prices are high. But praise the Lord, we're not backing down. We are just privileged to be chosen by Convoy of Hope. They're giving us people. $50,000 worth of groceries and supply. Can we give a shout out to Convoy of Hope? Amen. Because they've seen our heart for the community. So we, we become one of our distribution center. So on August 6th, we're going to bless our community. drive through giveaway here at Charisma. I want to start this off. Uh, 12 years ago, I'm not endorsing this book. I'm just uh, highlighting as an introduction. There's this book became New York best time, New York Times best selling. It's called Eat, Pray, and Love. How many of you have heard about this book? I did not read it, so I didn't know it. But it became popular. They made a movie out of this by Julia Roberts. Eat, Pray, and Love. What's the story about? The story is about a woman who was brokenhearted from relationship. So she was lonely, so she chose to travel all over the world to find the meaning of life. So the first place he went, she went is Rome. You know, there are three most important or popular cities in Europe. The most visited, Rome, Paris, and London. That's the three, the most visited city in Europe. So she visited Italy, and she learned the passion to eat. You know, Italians love to eat. That's why Italy, <laughs> they love to eat. But then Italians invite you to dinner. It's like two to three hours. It's elaborate eating. So she learned the passion to eat. She went to India. She learned how to pray, although that exactly the right kind of prayer, but she learned the importance of prayer. She ended up in Indonesia. Do, do we have any Indonesians in the house? Come on, somebody. We have some Indonesians. In the, and she found the love of her life in Indonesia. So eat, pray, and love. If Peter is alive today, you know what she will say about this book? Two of, two of those things are correct, pray and love, but you're, uh, pray and love, but you're missing something. It will be, everybody read this with me, pray, love, serve. Everybody read this together. Pray, love, serve. Everybody read this together. Pray, love, serve. Continue one more time. Pray, love, serve. Stand up on your feet as we welcome our online community and let us read the Word of God aloud. This is the Word of God and teaching us how to live and love in the last days. Let's all read this together. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, serve it to one another as good stewards of the manifold. Before you sit down, everybody say, pray, pray. love, love. serve. If you're watching online, type it in. Pray, love, serve. You can now be seated. And I entitled the message today, How to Live and Love in the Last Days. I asked the morning people by raising their hands. So I will ask you too. And of those of you watching online, you could just put an emoji, <laughs> thumbs up or this. How many of you have heard of the term, the last days? Come on, raise your hands if you heard the term, the last day. Come on, raise your hands up in the air. Come on, as if you don't care. Come on, somebody. How many of you have heard of the term, the last days? 
90% of us. Now, next question. How many of you believe we are living in the last days? Show your hands up in the air. Signs of the times are, are everywhere, right? That Jesus is coming soon. Now, I want to read this quotation, and I want to highlight is who said it before. Uh, I, I'll read it now. It says here, the last days are upon us. Weigh carefully the times. Means be serious about life. Don't be slacking off anymore. Look for him who is above all time, eternal and invisible. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. You know who said that? Ignatius. What year? A.D. 110. What? I thought it was just written by a prophet a few weeks ago because of the war in Ukraine. If the last days is upon, are upon us, A.D. 110, and now we're A.D. 2022. What's up with that? How long is this last days? Now, I want to, uh, you to understand this. I'm a Bible teacher. You know, one of the best compliments I, I receive when I teach the Word is people will come up to me, Pastor, you explain it simple, and I understood it. Oh, that's a big win for me. So I want you to know, in the Bible, the word last does not mean short. Last means final. Everybody say final. <laughs> to illustrate to you today, I would like to ask my wife to assist me the, the basketball. Come on. Come on, step carry. There you go. You know, I'm a sports uh, guy, right? Uh, basketball is life. <laughs> if there's a step carry, you're looking at the Filipino version of Steban Kare Kare. <laughs> so, when we first got married, we are in LA. We're a Laker fan. So, the time of the showtime, the Magic Jensen, uh, those rivalry between the Larry Bird, and we will gather in some neighbor's place or some church member's house and then my wife will get bored because she's not into sports and she will ask me come on James time to go and then I will tell my wife don't worry Sharon it's the last quarter <laughs> and then she will ask me how long is the last quarter so I google it you know how long is the last quarter of a basketball game 12 minutes oh it's only 12 minutes okay I could wait and then past 12 minutes and 30 minutes and the game is not over how come it's still going on? Because I, technically, there's, there's timeout, there's review of the play, and there's uh, sometimes they will uh, foul out. And then she asked me, how long? Oh, no worries, Sharon, sorry. It's only last two minutes. <laughs> how many of the last two minutes doesn't mean two minutes, right? Because every play is crucial. The final two minutes is very crucial. You don't pummel the ball. You fight for every possession. You question the referee if it's a questionable call because it's the final two minutes. So same thing in the scripture. The word last, that doesn't mean short. It means final. We are now in the final quarter living here on earth. Come on, somebody. To prove to you from the scripture, this is what the word of God says. Hebrews chapter 1. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times. In various ways, everybody said, in the last days, God has spoken to us by His, who is the Son. At the count of three, I want to shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. Amen. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. What's the meaning of that? In the past, God sent Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the forefathers, Moses, Joseph, David, Isaiah, Elijah. He used all the prophets. But in the last days, this is God's final play. He sent his MVP, his most valuable player in the person of his only son. Meaning to say God is no longer, no more after, will send another player there's only one son. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? This is the final play. He went all in through his son, Jesus Christ. I want you to read this from the New Living Translation. It will be clear. One, two, three. Read this with me. 
How long ago, God spoke many times in the many ways in our ancestors through the prophets. Now in this what? In, say it, read it. Come here. So one, two, three. So last days means final days, not short days. Final days, he has spoken to whom? Through his son. So what should we do now? We are in the final two minutes of the game. And God has no other play. His only play is Jesus. And we rally around Jesus. Come on, somebody. Peter mentioned something to this group of Christians, also applicable to us. What, how should we live then? Number one, everybody say this to me, pray watchfully. Everybody say, pray watchfully. Look at this, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Everybody read this together. The end of... Of all things is what? Near. Final minutes. Final quarter. Last two minutes. Everybody say, therefore. The word therefore is the conclusion. That's why when you see the word therefore in the Bible, you ask, what is therefore? Here is what is therefore. Be serious and watchful. About what? Everybody say, prayer. Now is the time for us not to slack off in our prayer life. Now is the time for us to double time in prayer. You know why prayer is important? How many of you have a cell phone, any smartphone? Everybody, all of us, right? What do you do in order for you to benefit from that gadget? You have to have the passcode, right? Sometimes if you forgot your passcode, you cannot open your, your cell phone. That's why the passcode is very important. Once you know the passcode, you could record, you could take... You could take notes, you could video, you could stream, you could watch, you could do computer, you could do banking, and that's gadget. But you need to know the passcode. Everybody say this to me, prayer is the passcode. That's why prayer is very, very important. That is our passcode to the throne room of heaven. Amen. That is the way we connect to God. You know, how many of you have been blessed by our worship team? Come on, can we appreciate our worship team? Amen. You know, I have some mega churches, mega church pastors, friend, been invited to our church, witness our worship team. Do you know our worship is envy of some other pastors? Hey, James, if I could invite your worship team to bring to Amche, I think yeah, when, when you get a chance, you bring them in. Like August, last Sunday of August, John Bibir, very famous pastor, John Bibir, right? He'll be speaking in the in one of their churches here. He said, "Can we invite the worship team to collaborate? Yeah, let them sing." So we are, we are so blessed with that. But do you know, part of the gifting of our worship is not just their talent, it's their heart for God. Every Sunday, you know what time they come here? 8 o'clock in the morning. Before they take the sound system, before they turn on all the gadgets, they turn on their hearts to Jesus. They spend time in prayer with Jesus. Before there's a mic check, there must be a heart check. Come on, somebody. Because this is not a gig. This is not a show. This is not a concert. It's worship to Jesus. Amen, somebody. God does anoint our hearts first. And then they pray together. They lay hands on each other. That is very, very powerful. That's a secret. Everybody say, pray watchfully. Here's the thing. Here's life lesson. You can always do more than pray after you prayed. But you can never do more than pray until you pray. Can I ask you a question? Has this ever happened to you? You have a very hectic top schedule the next day. And the first thing you did is you wake up early and started praying and praying. And while you're praying, God gave you wisdom. God gave you the idea. And throughout that very hectic day, God was with you. Come on, somebody. Because you pray first, right? Has this ever happened to you? Because you have a very busy schedule. You forgot to pray. You just pray on the go. And then you were annoyed. It was became the worst day ever. Come on, somebody. Talk back to me. That's the point. The more busy and hectic your schedule, the more you need to opt your prayer. I remember John Wesley said, oh, I have a long day tomorrow. I need to pray extra an hour. You can always do more than you pray after you pray. Try it, church. God will give you visions and revelations and idea and wisdom how to tackle that issue, that business and the problem in your life and your children in the marketplace. Than, than relying on your own knowledge and your schemes. 
if you want to read the book of Mark, it's full of action. You know, the book of Mark is different. <laughs> Matthew started with the Bethlehem, Jesus was born. Look, the book of Mark just already grown up, ready in action. It's all about action. That's because Mark is a, a young person. It's, it's to act. Chapter 1 of Mark is full of action. In fact, that was one of the busiest days of Jesus. What, how Jesus started the day is spend the night, overnight, praying. God, give me wisdom. I'm going to choose my team. Twelve. He spent the whole night. Prayer meeting to God the Father. After prayer, he went to the synagogue and he introduced himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am the Messiah, the anointed one. He declared and decree, the one that you're waiting for, here I am. Here I am. Now, one of the job descriptions of a Messiah, according to Isaiah, you will be able to set the captives free, to heal the sick, let the blind man walk, let the blind eye see. That's the job description of Messiah. Right after he said, I am the Messiah, he proved it to them. The next thing Jesus did, and he saw some people, and he just started praying for them. The, 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 the paralytic got, their muscles, got the muscles back and started walking. And the person, there's a person who was demon-possessed, cast him out. And the, that day, the day of Jesus ended, when he was invited by Peter to the mother-in-law's house, and during that time, the mother's law was sick, and Jesus healed the mother-in-law. Imagine from overnight prayer meeting to early morning gathering to praying for the sick, casting out demons, ended up praying for a person who was sick. What would you do the next day? Look at verse 35 of Mark. While it is still dark, way before dawn, he got up and went out to a secluded place, a spot, and what? Pray. Pray. Jesus was a very busy person, but he was never busy to pray. I just want to speak the truth in love. That's why sometimes our Christian walk is not too strong. You know, in America, an average Christian prays 45 seconds a day just before the meal. Thank you, thank, Lord, thank you for this food. If that is your time only to pray, to connect with God, there's a devil who's doing an all-out assault on our family, on our children, 24 hours a day. We need to fight on our knees. Come on, somebody, amen. You know, one of the, my DNA as a pastor, I, I grew up in a church, it's liturgical. Have you been to a church that they read their prayers? There's no heart. They just read it in one motion. There's no passion. Then I met some Christians that when they pray, like as if they're talking to God in front of their face, they tell God oh, over the heart. And it, 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 it inspires me because their prayers is not mechanical. It's, not, it's, it's power. There's the anointing of the Holy Spirit there. So I learned how to pray like that. And then one of the greatest moments of my life, when I started hanging out with Jesus, really getting close to Jesus, sometimes God would spoke, speak to me, on your birthday, when I turned 30, go on, on, on a prayer mountain and fast for three days. Oh, wow, pray, we're going to fast for three days. B birthday, it's time for me to celebrate, right? Okay, God, that's, I'm passionate about you. We fast for three days. And it became a habit every year, praying and fasting, 10 days, 21 days. Did you know this building was given to us by the Lord during the time of prayer and fasting? Can we celebrate that? Amen, somebody. <laughs> And I want to invite you, we never do a big outreach without being praying, praying together. On the last Friday of July, from 10 a.m. to 3 in the morning, if you want to come here, come gather with us, and let's spend the night worshiping, talking to Jesus, and praying. Amen, somebody. Everybody say, it's time to be serious in prayer. Now, I want to speak the truth in love. This is not a political statement, but I'm a man of God. June 24, 2022. A miracle happened that been praying for 49 years when Roe versus Wade was overturned. Can we celebrate that? Come on, church. Come on, somebody. Life wins. Everybody, life wins. Do you know the exact time when the Supreme Court gave the decision? 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 minutes. Isn't that prophetic? John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life. 
Life wins. Amen, somebody. Let's pray that. 40 million babies have been dead. Come on, somebody. They have a future. They have a calling from God. And you know, here's amazing, another crazy thing. Do you know what month they're celebrating in the Catholic, our friends in the Catholic, liturgical month, June 24? The birthday of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, while in the womb, already knew that Jesus is Lord. Come on, somebody. Because every baby in the womb has a future in Christ. Amen, somebody. It's, come on, if you want to give a clap to Jesus, come on, somebody. Don't be shy. It's answer to pray. It's a miracle. Choose life. How did it happen? 49 years of intercession of people of God in America praying. Come on, somebody. And I believe revival is upon us. Amen? Amen. Now, don't... I know all of us are feel guilty. I'll be honest. Sometimes I'm slacking off in my prayer too. Please, help me out. I'm a human as you are. And Peter is the person who failed in the school of prayer. That's why he was saying, watch and pray. I want to ask you a question. Everybody, those, you're thinking, Cap. Where did Jesus hear the term watch and pray? Who did he hear, hear that from? From whom? From Jesus. Remember when Jesus was here on earth, it was the hardest night of Jesus, Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus took only three friends, Peter, John, and and, 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 and Peter, John, who, John, who said Peter, John, and James. He said, watch out and pray so that you will not fall into the, what happened to Peter? Did they fall into temptation? Yep. Look at this picture. While Jesus was praying hard, before this, but Jesus praying hard, look at the three boys. <sighs> So they fail in the area of prayer. Can I just tell you this? You know one thing beautiful about the school of Jesus? Even though you fail, you're not disqualified. Come on, somebody. Can we give a clap of praise to Jesus for that? Amen. Even though you fail, you're not canceled. You're not disqualified. You get a chance after chance after chance until you get it right. Amen, somebody. And Peter got it right. After that, we know we stayed 10 days prayer meeting at the upper room. We, did, we were there during our trip to Israel. So he heard this from Jesus. Listen to this. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. That was the last week. Hear me out. That was the last week of Jesus' life on earth. And here's my life lesson. I know my days are shorter in charisma, and so are you. Either we retire or we die or we move. That's the season. I learned this from Jesus. As your days get fewer, you should pray harder. Everybody read this with me, Charisma. As your days become fewer, you should pray harder. One week before he went to the cross to die, Jesus was praying hard. His sweat became blood in agony. Let it be an example for us, church. As our days become pure, you should pray harder. Everybody say, watch and pray. Amen. 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 Number two, love sacrificially. Everybody love sacrificially. Here is what God says. Everybody read this together with me. Above all things, everybody say fervent love. For one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins the word above all things here doesn't mean that uh, uh, the most important the most important is prayer the second is love it means like an icing on the cake on, on top of it of all the cherry on the on, on, on the on the okay, add this love fervently you know I, I checked the word fervent in the Greek it means this Fervent is ectenes, strenuously. Everybody say stretch. Come on, everybody, let's stretch. stretch come on, stretch. You, get, you feel the strain, right? That's an ectenes. That's a fervent. You are being stretched. How many of you, when you love, you be willing to be stretched? Come on, somebody. 
it will be a sacrifice. You know, the word here is a, a runner stretching for the finish line. This is an example of a runner giving all he got. Amazing. This is from Texas AMM. He won in the 400 meter. You know what he did? He did a Superman dry, dive to the finish line. And this is how he landed on his face. <laughs> but he won. If you could look at that, all of his muscles and all of his passion and all of his strength is reaching out for the goal. That is what God is saying. We are in the Love Olympics. Let us love to the end. You know, July is an amazing month for us now in Washington. The festivals are back. The donations are back in person. And I'm, I'm kidding you not. I've been doing three weddings every Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. And said, why? What happened? Because of COVID, we postponed our wedding, but now everything is open. Let's have one us. I want to have a wedding. And my brother Edgar saying, yeah, praise the Lord. Because 2020 is funeral, funeral. Now it's celebration of life. Come on. <laughs> we, we need to repopulate the earth. Come on, somebody. Amen. And whenever I do this premarital counseling, how many of you have heard the proposition, marriage is a 50-50 proposition? Wrong. If you, that, if you do that 50-50, your marriage will not succeed. Can I tell you this? Marriage is a hundred to one hundred proposition. Come on, somebody. When you get married, you need to go all in with that person. Amen? How many percent? Fifty-fifty? No, one hundred and above. That's why God says here, love covers a multitude of sin. Everybody say covering love. There are two kinds of love here, recovering and recovering. The first is within the circle, our family. When you are a spouse, offends you, you have the choice to forgive or to expose that spouse, your partner. And God says, you need to cover them with love because love covers a multitude of sin. How many of you are married? How many of you know you are not married to the perfect person? <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. There's no one as perfect couple, but we're doing our best to become the best for Jesus. Amen. Many you say your spouse will hurt you. Your husband will hurt you. Your husband sometimes will offend you or did something stupid things, things like that. And you have that choice. People are always looking for ground for divorce. Why don't we look for ground for marriage? Come on, somebody. That's why when we celebrate 20, come on, everybody give it to Jesus. Come on. When, whenever I do a wedding, like 25 years anniversary, 50 years anniversary wedding, I always say this. This is not a 50 years of wedding anniversary also. This is a 50 years of anniversary of forgiveness, of acceptance, of covering. And my wife and I, we have an acronym. We call it PIPSIP. Every time PIPSIP. Praise in public, confront in private. That's why my wife and I, in publicly, we praise each other. We honor her. I'm so happy to be married, to, uh, blessed to have Sharon in my life. I will tell my kids, Hannah, Richard, are, didn't you know you were so blessed to have Sharon as your mom? But I confront her in private. Same thing with her. She praised me publicly. But every now and then, just the two of us, she will slap me in the face. In Jesus' name, come out! <laughs> just kidding. Everybody say, praise in public, praise. confront in private. Don't, don't air your dirty laundry on Facebook, on social media, on TikTok, and things like that. No, because love, ever, it's a covering love. Why are you covering your husband? Why are you covering your wife? Because God told me, love covers. Multi what if he did not listen? That's why we have a church. Take it to the pastor. Take it to the elders. Matthew chapter 18. What if the church, they had listened to pastor or elders? Expose him in public. That's how the Bible goes. Uh, confront, public, private, private. And if the person didn't listen, okay. Expose him in public. But you don't expose it right away. You need to ever say cover. Come on, somebody. Covering. Now, we are good with that. But this is one thing that probably uh, we, we, we need more is recovering love. Ever say recovering love. First is covering love. Love covers a multitude of sin. What is the recovering love? P, 
Peter mentioned a word that is powerful, hospitable. Everybody say hospitable. Hospitable is, Christians are the one who invented the hospital. What is hospitable? Love the strangers, right? We're not related to doctors, but we go there because they're doctors and nurses. They'll take care of us. That's why they're hospitable. In the Greek, the word hospitable means love strangers, to love the strangers, to prove to you in the, in the Greek words, this is pilex, pil, pileosenos, that's two words in the Greek combined together, it means brotherly love, love for stranger, love for foreigner, and love for enemy. Here's what we are good at. I'll show you on the screen. This is the core, the pastor, the elders, the deacons, the faithful partners. That's our circle. We love each other. We pray together. We thank God for the committed, the ones who are giving. They have a partner in the, in the church, the serving, volunteering, the committed. And then we have the congregation. We come to church once a week or once a month and are a part of the congregation here in Linwood and then Everett. And then we have the crowd. We have a gathering. We have food. We see the crowd. We have the CEO of the church. They come Christmas and Easter only. But we love them. But we have the community. Come on, somebody. Everybody say community. I must love the core, the committed, the congregation, the crowd, and the community. Sometimes we love with just with inner circles. Pelo Filipino. Pelo Latino. No, no, God called us to love one another. Amen. To get out of our cliche or cliques. I'm sorry. And then get out and watch out for the marginalized. Why? Hear me out, Charisma. This is a command from Jesus Christ. I want to read this together. Can we show that verse in the scripture about this in Leviticus? In Leviticus, about the command to love the stranger. Everybody, would you read this with me? When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not wrong him. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as one of your citizens. You shall love him as yourself, for you were what? Strangers in the land of what? Egypt. How many of you were not born and raised in America? Would you please raise your hands? Come on, you're immigrants. Aren't you thankful that when we move here, we're strangers, and people who live here before us welcome us? Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. Welcome us with open arm. How many of you are grateful to be living in America? Come on, somebody. It's not a perfect land, but this is the best land that God has called you to be right now. You know, sometimes I'm complaining about paying taxes to my dad. You know, my dad kind of called me out. James, don't play, complain about paying taxes. Do you know it was America who gave you the good future, the good life? The opportunity, the American dream, it was America who gave you that. And be a good citizen in paying your taxes. Oh, yes, Daddy. It's not a perfect man, but this is who God gave us this land. And we are here. And we have to welcome strangers. Amen, somebody? Because here's the thing about that. There's this problem nowadays. It's called cocooning. Cocoon. We just shelter ourselves, Christians. Just us, no more. And then the 1980s, the birth of the gated community. It's only us, no the access. If you don't belong here, stay away from our community. It's called super cocooning. And then it's getting worse now. It said, our neighborhoods aren't filled with neighbors. They're filled in streets. Can I ask you that now, now? Do you know your neighbors? Do you know your neighbors by name? Ah, uh, that lady with the crazy hat. Oh, that weird guy. No, do you know them by name? Come on, somebody. It's a challenge for us. Christian hospitality. We are commanded by God for this. Imagine one in four Americans know most of their neighbors. Only one in four. To give you an example... Have you heard of this place called Rosetto? This is not in Italy, it's in Pennsylvania. This is not a finding from a Christian magazine, this is from historians 
who did a, serve, a study of this town, they found out people who live in Roseto live longer and healthier, fewer heart attacks. Wow, it's just like the place to be, right? People live longer, happier, healthier, and fewer heart attacks. So they did a study. What's the, what's the secret sauce of the Rosettans? They found out, lead me out, it's not their diet. It says, a study was done, the results showed that the good physical and mental health of the Rosettans was attributed not to diet, exercise, or medical intervention. Rather, it was a natural positive result of a close-knit, everybody read this with me, community of people that cared for what? One another. And sought it out that everyone thrived. That's why it became known as the Rosetto effect. That is loving the outsider, amen? That is loving the stranger. That is being hospitable. Look at what Malcolm Gladwell said about the people in Rosetto. They visited each other. They stopped to chat in Italian. Most of them are Italian. Uh, moved from Italy to Pennsylvania. And they cooked for each other. Take it out. Extended families were town social. A structure, many homes had three generations under one roof. And again, I want to highlight this. This is not from a Christian uh, uh, perspective. This is what they said. Researchers saw that the unifying and calming effect of the church. If, if that is true in your life, could somebody say amen? Come on, somebody. I know every week you are coming from a turbulent week, stress, covid Inflation, gas prices, hard times, interest high, things like that. And I pray that every time you come to church, you will hear the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Every time you come to church, the worship will be up, up, up. And then there will be the presence of God coming down. And you will leave this place. You are at calm. You are at peace. Because you know you have encountered Jesus in the house. Today, come on, somebody. Today in God's house. Amen. That's why showing up to church is very, very important. I just want to let you know, online viewers, if you're local, come to church. You could come to a birthday party. You could come to a gathering. You could come to the mall. You could go to a baseball game. Why not come to the house of God? Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. The calming effect of the church, that's being hospitable. You know, one time, Jesus was telling his disciples in Matthew, he says this, uh, for I was hungry and you feed me, fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger. This is Jesus. And you invited me into your home. So the disciples, oh God, I didn't get that. When were you hungry? When did we see you ever hungry and feed you? or thirsty, or give you something to drink, or a stranger show you hospitality. Ever, when did you see you sick or in prison and visit you? Jesus said this, I tell you the truth. When you did to eat one of the least of this, my brothers and sisters, you are doing it for me. Amen, somebody? That's why I ask your pastor, I'm very passionate about our love your neighbor back to school amen somebody why this is practicing the command of jesus whenever you give that backpack to that kid you're giving a backpack to jesus whenever you're giving a bag of grocery to that family during inflation you're giving a bag of hope coming from jesus come on somebody church i just want to let you know how blessed and favor $50,000 worth of groceries will, will be driven all the way from Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, and will land, park at this parking lot, August 6, 2022. Can we give a clap for Jesus? Come on, somebody. Amen. $50,000 worth of groceries and supplies. They're coming here. Not just the truck driver. Even the Convoy of Hope leader said, we heard so many good stories about your church, James. We want to see it in person. So I challenge you, church, when we do this, you're handing a blessing 
you're doing it for Jesus. So if you want to participate, August 6th, our, our, our coordinator is uh, Mark's wife, Lorraine. Thank God for Lorraine. You want to connect with her, help her out, and what we could do. And then it's being Christian hospitality. Last year, last year I was so happy to say this, that some of us gave, received a grocery, and some of you did not keep it to yourself. You went to your neighborhood, like this is Raymond giving out to, to, the, to the neighbors. Come on, somebody. Can we give a clap of praise to Jesus for that? Amen. I'm passionate about this. Everybody say, love. Come on, love fervently. Amen. Love. Love your inner circle. Cover your spouse from a multitude of mistakes. Come on, somebody. And then open up your circle to stranger. Recover them. They're lost. God is calling them out. Recover them. Covering and recovering love. And last but not the least, serve passionately. Serve passionately. I like what... The Bible says here, as each one has received a gift, everybody say, receive a gift, serve it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Everybody say, spiritual gift. You know, every one of us has an inborn talent. God has just gifted that, the physical body, that's brain, inborn talent. But when you become a Christian, God has given you a spiritual gift. It's more than natural. It's a supernatural favor from the Lord. Spiritual gift is the God-given ability to serve others that they may be edified and God will be glorified. Because in my own natural talent, I'm a shy person. I'm the person who will hide and will not speak publicly. To, to kid you not, I have a speech impediment. Um, sometimes my, uh, you could notice sometimes, but the way I pronounce, sometimes uh, well, at school, they ask me to, to introduce ourselves. True story, when I was in college, they say, Tell your name and where you came from. So I stood up and I was really scared. Uh, I, I should say, my name is James. I came from Manila. I said, my name is Manila. I came from James. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Public speaking is the one of the things I don't want to do. But God has a sense of humor. I'm going to call you to be a pastor. Come on, and you'll be loud. <laughs> it's a gift. Spiritual gift. Why do we use it? For others, be edified, and God will be glorified. Now, just to let you know, we are saved to serve. Everybody say, we are saved to serve. Yes, you are saved not just to sit there every Sunday. Come on, somebody. God has a gift in you that needs to share to others, and God will be edif glorified, and others' people will be edified. Here's what the Bible says. Each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, do you know the word grace means cherish in the Greek? Cherish. Everything we do here is grace. We are people of grace. Love on you. And the word charisma, our name of the church is charisma. What's the meaning of charisma? It's not just national talent or your charismatic person. No, it's a spiritual gift. All that we're doing is through the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are doing it out of grace. So I want you to understand that. Here are some truths about spiritual gift. Everybody say this with me. Every believer has a gift. Come on, shout it out. Every believer has a gift. Don't you ever say that you don't have a gift. Don't insult Jesus. He created you, wired you with your uniqueness, and you have a gift. For example, I just want to thank God for Abby. Right, Abby, right now, as young as you are, together with the family, serving here with the camera. That's a gift. That's helping Raymond the camera. So don't take it lightly. We, 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 we appreciate that, Abby. Jesus is so proud of you. Don't you ever say this, oh, my gift, I'm just a housewife. Wrong. You know you're raising history makers. Those kids will be powerful. Come on, somebody, entrepreneur, amen. Oh, pastor, I'm just a barista. I just make coffee. Wrong. Do you know baristas are heroes? You keep us alive. No, keep us awake. <laughs> <laughs> right don't you ever say i'm just this i'm just that, that no you have been anointed by god amen somebody because every believer has a gift everybody say i am gifted as each one has received a gift now why is that gift for the, number two is this use your gift to serve other people everybody serve other people Oh, I want to serve Jesus. Okay, you serve people. Because lo Jesus loves the people. Jesus loves the community. You serve Jesus by serving people. 
Use your gift to serve. That's it. The Bible says this, as each one has received a gift, every believer has a gift, then serve it to one another. We have another saying here. Everybody say, save people, serve people. people. Come on, say it. One, two, three. Save people. And I want you to know about gift things. Some gifts are noticeable. Others are unnoticeable. But all of them are what? Helpful. What always notice in your body is your eyes, your nose. But they didn't see your heart. They don't see your kidney. Those, those are important, right? If your heart stops beating, you're dead. So, but sometimes you get a highlight is the outside. Can I ask you today, do you know who prints the bulletin every Sunday? Over 100 bulletins that you receive today. Those drive away pliers. There's a lady by the name of Amabel Octavio who will come here late at night and print the bulletin. And she's up there. Can we appreciate that? Come on, somebody. Unnoticeable, but very helpful. Like the, the daughter of Mark at the back, uh, the camera with Raymond. Come on, can we give a prayer, clap to, to all the people behind the scenes so that the people in the online community can watch us? They don't see that on the screen, on the stage, but they're gifted and they're doing it for Jesus. Amen, somebody. And they're needed. You know, sometimes the behind the scene ministries are unnoticeable, but when they make a mistake, there's a feedback. But when they do a good job, we don't even say thank you. At the count of three, let's give our shout out to the heroes of charisma, our Sunday school teachers. Come on, somebody. Our ushers. Come on, somebody. Our servers who prepared the communion. Hospitality group. Come on, somebody. Those who are decorating. Come on, somebody. Those who are painting. Those who are uh, uh, parking lot. Come on, somebody. Let's give them a shout out. Amen. Unnoticeable, but they are very important. Now, I want to challenge you. Last Thursday, I was praying here, and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit gave me a, a, a burden. And I was praying for our parking lot. All of us were stretching our hand to our parking lot. Lord, there'll be thousands of families. We'll be blessed. And I see those bushes. Could you look at around the bushes right there? That's not our property. Our property is only to the post. The, that's the builder's property. And I, I, something came in me. What a waste of property, right? No one is using it. Can we claim this for Jesus? Come on, somebody. Imagine what we could do with this. Imagine what we could do with this. Let's believe God that the builder will donate it to us. Come on, church. <laughs> Crazy idea. And then, if we are believing that, let's claim that. Let's take care of it. We need b two big medical dental band. Aiton Wheeler will park over there. So we need to clean the bushes. Don't just laugh. <laughs> I need your hand. So this Saturday, if you're free, 9 o'clock, I take care of your coffee and donuts. Bring your tools. Let's clean up that bushes. Come on, somebody. Let's give it a, a good presentation for our community when they come here. The kids could play there. We could play the, put the medical dental team truck there. And then later on, let's claim it. It's for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. I challenge you. Lend us your hand. Let's serve God through this city and make, see, change this, the structure of Linwood. And when I'm coaching uh, certain pastors, I always warn them of this tendency. We call this gift projection. What's the meaning of gift projection? It is our tendency to assume that our calling and our giftings are the same calling and gifting everybody else should have. How many of you are blessed with Dang? Come on, Dang Hap. Come on, somebody. Beautiful voice, right? A gift projection will be like this. What if I approach Joel? Hey, Joel, why could you not sing like Dang? It will be unfair, right? What if I say, how many of you know Sister Jean? Jean Herbert, the dancer, the, the loudspeaker. No, 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 no. Uh, what if I tell Tom, hey, Tom, how come you cannot dance? And how come you're so quiet? It will be unfair for Tom. That's not his gift. Right? 
It will be unfair for Sister Jean if I say, Hey, Sister Jean, how come you cannot fix the flat tire of the car? No, that's not her gift. That is Tom's gift. And her gift is to boss around over Tom. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, we don't do a gift projection. My wife is, lo I love her. She's, she's gifted with culinary skills. When she cooks, it's so good. You know, one time my daughter came up to me, Dad, we tasted some Filipino food, but mom's Filipino food is the best. And what's the secret of mama? I told her, when your mom cook, it's made out of love and compassion. When I prepare your meal, it's made of bitterness and anger. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my gift, but that's her gift. So what I'm trying to say, know your gift. God has wired you to do that. Use it for God. Last but more important, the reason for service is to glorify God. Coach Danji says this, remember that mentor leadership is all about serving. Jesus said, even the Son of Man came out to be served, not to serve but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for me. Flip the script. Because sometimes we are just so enamored with social media. And you try to evaluate your life based on the social media perspective. Like you said, how many likes do I get on Instagram? How many followers I have in TikTok? How many friends I have in Facebook? It's all about who's liking me, who's loving me, who's following me. That's not the Christian way. The Christian way is this. How many people am I loving? How many people am I serving? How may I serve you? How many people I'm bringing to Jesus? That is the Christian way. Because our hero is Jesus Christ. He came to serve, not to be served. Jesus put you first. And think about this. Think of how God won you over. Not by taking power, but by serving you. Not with a sword in his hands, but nails in his hands. Not coming to judge, but to bear judgment. How to live and love in the last days. Everybody say this to me. Pray. Love, serve. Pray watchfully, love sacrificially, serve passionately. I saw this hoodies. I want to order this. It said, pray, love, serve, repeat. <laughs> pray, love, serve, repeat. During the World War II, there was a, a town in France, Strasbourg, bombed by the Nazis. So after the war, they're trying to collect the debris to restore the city, the community. They saw the, the statue of Jesus bomb. So they hired a sculpture to pick up all the broken pieces. They found the, the head, the body, the, the foot, the legs, but they cannot find the hands of Jesus. So wow, isn't that a shameful to see a statue of Jesus without hands? And so the mayor asked, what if you just do... In improvise, you, you, your sculpture do a hand. And then the, the artist hesitated. And I think it will be better like that. Let's keep it that way. And make this as a mission to all the town members of the people living in the city that Jesus has no hands but your hands. That Christ has no hands to serve but ours. Charisma, God needs your hand to love those people in our community. Would you lend Jesus your hand when you give, when you serve, when you tithe, when you hug a person who's sad and lonely, depressed, when you visit the poor, when you feed the downcast, you're becoming the hand of Jesus. You know, this all started with a few backpacks. We don't have much money, but we want to love our community. 
With the extra money that we have, we bought 50 backpacks. We lay hands on this. Can I just tell you this? You should be uh, feeling good about yourself, church. I just want to let you know. Did you know that we've been doing this for 10 years straight now? Come on, come on. 10 years straight now. 10 years we've been doing this pre-COVID, during COVID, backpack giveaway, grocery supplies. It all started with 50. Now God has entrusted it with global partners like the Convoy of Hope. Imagine there will be like $50,000 worth of grocery supplies given to us. Now we're getting accolade from the news media. Did you know that when they had their news, uh, when they have our backpack giveaway last year, drive through said Charisma Christian Center's new method of handing out groceries to families. This is not Christian uh, uh, journalists. They're saying highlighting what you're doing in our community. You know, it t takes a lot of money to do that. One mental medical dental van is $2,000. Just want to let you know. We, we pay for that. Uh, we're going to get two. Thousands of backpacks like cost $10,000 with the school supplies. We pay for that. We don't solicit on outsiders. We just believe in the generosity of people like you who believe God, what God is doing in this. And I just want to let thank you for your partnership. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And sometimes I get scared. Sometimes we have our elders of mind big of a pastor next year. Let's do 2,000 backpacks. I want to hold on to my chair. But their faith is stronger probably than me. And then one day, God gave me a word. And ever since then, I never fear. I never fear. Because I know God will always supply. A prophecy that God gave to me in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7 and 8 and 11 says, If you feed those who are hungry and take care of those needs of those who are troubled, then your light will shine in the darkness. The Lord will always lead you. He will satisfy your needs. How many of you have been sustained by the Lord during this COVID and went by on and above? Come on, somebody. Satisfy your needs in the dry lands. Come on, church. And you will be like a spring that will never run dry. Inflation, gas high prices, you will not be affected because your source is God. He's above all. Amen, somebody. I like to call... Eva, if you could help us out. And all of us will stand up. While I was preparing this, the Lord reminded me of this simple song that I used to sing when I first fall in love with Jesus, when I first serve Him and dedicate my life to Him. It's pray, love, serve. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you you know a person by praying to him the greatest thing in all my life is loving you the greatest thing in all my life is serving you charisma you want to be great in the kingdom of god pray love serve that's how we become great. It's not how many serving me. It's not how many liking me. It's not how many following me. It's not how many loving me. Flip the script. How many people am I serving? How many people am I touching? How many people am I loving? How many people... Am I giving them a second chance? Covering their mistakes? Loving on them? Giving them another a chance after chance after chance? And could we sing this with me, church? As Eva sing this for Jesus? Knowing you, loving you, serving you. The greatest thing in all Knowing you, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. Let's worship him. I want to know you more. 
the last time I love you sing simple how to live and love in the last days we prioritize prayer pray watchfully we pray and we will see God's hand move in our community in our family in our children help us Lord to love sacrificially go all the way in for Jesus we're gonna be stretched we're gonna be sometimes we're gonna be hurt but we're gonna go all in 100% not just 50 50 all of us go 100% to Jesus and we're gonna serve with passion we serve God passionately because Jesus came not to be served but to serve and I thank you Lord you made a promise if we do what you call us to do, you will always make sure there will be a supply for our needs. That we will have the springs of favor and blessing of God that will never run dry. Where does our help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord is my source. The Lord is everything. Hallelujah. I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous begging for bread. God will supply all our needs. And I want to speak blessing over you right now. I want to speak favor in the midst of inflation, increase in the midst of downturn. Your kingdom of God is not affected by recession. 
you belong to a different source. God is your source. He is your provider. He is your healer. He is with you, for you, and not against you. I ask you now, Lord, bless Charisma to be a healing community. Bless us with more so we could give more. We could love more. We could serve more. We could reach more for Jesus. Entrust us, Lord, with greater influence in the city, in the neighborhood, in, in, here in America, locally and globally for the mission of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, can we give Jesus a clap of praise today? Come on, somebody. Amen. You